we're at the point in a comfortable atmosphere here at Little Sister. A little Sister well, essentially came out of uh, a relationship I had with Chef Tin Wong. Throughout the years working together in kitchens, we would go back to his place or we would go um, off-site anywhere and we would eat basically these dishes. This is grandparents' dishes, uh, classic Vietnamese uh, traditional dishes. And these are things that we would enjoy eating off when we're done working at Global Fine Dining Restaurants or American New Breweries. The first Little Sister opened in 2013 in Manhattan Beach and has since grown to five locations in Southern California, including El Segundo. I love the high ceiling and the indoor-outdoor ambiance. And yeah, it's just a really nice location and, and you know atmosphere. I like how they still keep the essence of the Vietnamese cuisine, which is one of my favorite uh, cuisines in the world. The concept and the core of Little Sisters is respecting truly traditional Vietnamese cuisine. Um, We've often been labeled as fusion here and there, and um, it's um, simply not quite the case. Ooh, white rice. Right here, just throw a little bit yeah. of white rice in there. Ooh, it smells like my grandma's kitchen. We focus mainly on sort of the French colonization period uh, in Vietnam, so we put a lot of emphasis on the quality of even our butters, our breads, the pate and house. Throw that in there. Oh, wow, it smells so good. Yeah, so good. Throw a little bit of butter in there. Oh, you can't go wrong with a little butter. Bit of butter. The food itself, in this regard, you know, the majority of it is being dressed with just fresh herbs, fresh items. Bean sprouts. Malaysian black pepper sauce, which is a bunch of black pepper, uh, shrimp paste. Uh, we cooked that down with uh, ginger garlic shallot. Really, really nice. Um, it's really strong flavored, salty, peppery. So the balance between the salty, the spicy, you know, the, those little, those executions that we can maintain is what takes this over the top, and it's what you don't find in other Vietnamese restaurants. Throw that on there, make it like a nice little... I can smell every ingredient in exactly. there. I can smell the onion, I can smell the green beans, and the pork. And the pork, right? Yeah. So good. It covers all the, the people's palates and flavors that they might enjoy regardless. For those that haven't had Vietnamese food or are not familiar with it, they don't have to be un uncertain whether they're going to like something here or not. It's wonderful, really does. Throw re the rest of that goodness on there has a little, the sauce deplays the pan a little bit, so it just get all that goodness. And that's our shaky, shaky beef, one of the most, if not the most popular dish on our menu. Bravo! Woo. That's it, we're done. <laughs> Beautiful, yummy. If you're at lunch and you only have 20 minutes, you know, uh, a bowl of pho and, you know, a couple a couple rolls and then obviously dessert, right? And then um, back to work, right? But if you have time to sit and everything else again, the way the menu is presented is very shareable. It's meant to be family style. Okay, Chef Mikey, we have food in front of us. And from what I understand, this is a traditional Vietnamese lunch, right? This would be very typical of a Vietnamese lunch. Okay. Uh, with some dishes you might find uh, from a bon tail, very familiar, down to something that's a little more rare in a, in a Vietnamese restaurant that we do here. Let's start here. What's you got this? it. So this is a classic uh, bon tail, which is basically a Vietnamese crepe uh, made out of rice flour, coconut milk, uh, and in our version, we cook out pork belly, rock shrimp into the actual crepe itself. And so then, a gluten-free option? That's correct. It's naturally gluten-free. Stuffed with fresh bean sprouts, uh, grilled prawns, and then meant to be eaten with this lettuce set here. The lettuce set is going to be basically uh, a wrap that you can create out of fresh green leaf lettuce and red leaf lettuce. Then you're going to stuff that with any kind of condiment you like, chilies, vermicelli noodles, um, any of the fresh herbs, and then drizzle or dip it into our nak chong fish sauce. Wow. And then now we move on to this, and this actually has some of the French influence, correct? That's correct. This one has um, the classic French baguette. This is a bame, and in this case, the dak biet. So this is going to be a combination of three kinds of pork, including a pork pate, very French, um, a house-made egg yolk mayo, beef tendon, um, and even pork loaf, and a charbroiled pork as well. So it's got a little bit of everything. Beautiful. And then look, look at this. It's so fancy. What's in that? <laughs> <laughs> this last one here is a, a black rice dish. So you're not going to find this in most of the Vietnamese restaurants, um, but it's one of the best-selling dishes we have here and very popular to share at lunchtime. Cooked with three kinds of pork on the inside, um, including a uh, duck fat braised pork belly, as well as a mixture of seafood from baby octopus, grilled prawns, clams and mussels, and topped again with our fresh herbs uh, and chilies. This one here served with a side of uh, lime leaf aioli, our house fuego sauce, and uh, pineapple chutney. That can be either 
eaten separately and used as a dip or mixed all together. And sweet, spicy, it's got it all. Yeah. Wow, thank you so much, Chef. It looks absolutely wonderful. I'm thank ready you. to dig in, That's but I'm it. not sharing. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Get your own food. <laughs> Ambiance wise is where it takes a hard left turn. So the balance between trying to make it feel comfortable and cozy, some of the antiques and things that you see are very grandma's house, I would say. Um, but then you have the graffiti, essentially. So coming from areas in um, San Gabriel Valley and in LA, these are things that for us visually represent what we see on a daily basis. At lunchtime, the vibe is light and airy. But at dinner time, the lights are low and the energy is high but you're still going to be comfortable here. All of the Little Sisters I've been to, all three of them are uh, just extremely cozy type feel to them. Um, they're modern yet cozy, which you don't always get in, in restaurants nowadays. And it kind of feels like a Irish bar, but in an Asian uh, atmosphere, it's interesting. So Roy, tell us some of the specialty drinks here at El Segundo Little Sister. Um, we love making craft cocktails here. Uh, I'm gonna make you two of our most popular and some of my favorites for sure. Uh, the first one being the lavender lychee sour. It's a fun play on a lavender uh, lychee vodka sour. Uh, we do a little bit of fresh lavender, vodka as the base, elderflower liqueur, um, and an egg white to kind of give it a nice texture. Uh, the second one is the bee sting. This is my personal favorite. It's a fun play on a bee's knees. We do it with gin, a little lemon juice, and a house-made habanero syrup. Finish it off with a little orange zest, kind of rounds it out, makes it super balanced. And the majority of people who come and eat a Little Sister don't read Vietnamese or speak it, right? So it can be a little bit of a, a task, you know, and it can feel a little uncomfortable. So it's the service, in my opinion, that will carry it over and then make people comfortable and guide them through that, you know, that dining experience. There's even some secrets here at Little Sister, such as why are there butterflies in the decor? And why is the restaurant named Little Sister? We do have a lot of uh, little fun facts and a lot of mystery still. So there's some of the things that, you know, from the, from the true reason the name is what it is to what are the butterflies to, you know, um, I, can't, I can't give away all the secrets, okay. you know what I mean? So we'll leave a little mystery. <laughs> So if you're ready to taste everything that this place has to offer, visit DineLittleSister.com. Mm. Good stuff. <laughs>